I have a quick old trick I want to show you today. What I'm going to call this is a vice ball. I don't know if there's a definitive term for it, but is a very handy tool for doing very precise square milling or clamping of parts that are odd shaped, maybe castings, something where you just can't get a good reference surface or a good clamping surface on the part. You can either make it from scratch or buy a couple parts and finish it off yourself. In my case, I bought these parts. I'm going to modify them a little bit to make them nicer. Put a round radius on this corner here. This thread is a little bit too long to thread all the way into the ball so we're going to cut that off and chamfer it again so that it fits all the way into the ball and looks nice. We're also going to clamp on this ball and mill a flat on it. What we want is a flat to mate with the movable jaw so that when we put it there the ball itself has a good seat on one side and it can interact with the part on the round side. Then I'll talk about a couple other options and show you how we use this one. If you look at this part, you can see that it's tapered these two faces about uh, two or three degrees from each other. And this is an example casting we had in the scrap bin here. It's a milling stop dog, if you were wondering. It doesn't have a parallel clamping surface. You might try to throw it in like this. Once you start to put force on here, the part's going to want to move. It might be pulled out or fall out when you put force on it. It's not going to give you a good hold on the part and that will probably affect the precision of the work that you're going to do to it. With the ball in there, if you can, center it on your vise so the load of your moving jaw is even and clamping on it this way is going to allow you to force the part against that reference edge and the ball will negate that angle. You can clamp onto an angled part with this tool. This sharp corner on the back here, I'm going to Put a round on that and we'll grab a corner rounding tool. Now we'll face off the other side here and give a chamfer just so it has a nice fit. Much better. Now luckily for us we already have a reference surface on this ball because this one came with the hole drilled and tapped. The outside diameter of that countersink is going to give us a flat surface. So I'm going to use that as a reference against our hard jaw to clamp on the part. Now if you used another ball that didn't have a hole in it already, you could use a washer to get a reference surface on that ball, clamp on it, and then do your cut, spot, drill, and tap operations like that. In this case we already have a reference surface we can put against the hard jaw, and then we're going to clamp on it. Stay in the middle so that your force stays centered on the ball because you have a very small point clamping surface in the front here. One note, this is a soft steel ball. You wouldn't want to try and do this with something that was hard because it'll be hard to machine your features into and also because it may damage your vice jaws. Uh, you can of course use whatever you have but for something like this where it's not the most amazing clamping situation in the world, generally the smaller the end mill you use the less force it's going to impart on your piece. The bull nose has a slight radius at the tips of the end mill. They're not sharp this is probably a 10 or 15 thou radius on the tips of these flutes. And that's going to lower the impact that you're going to get on your part while you're cutting, which is going to reduce your chances of tilting or moving the part or even pulling it out while you're cutting. So we're going to throw this end mill in a collet. We're going to stick it back up as hard as we can to get the least amount of deflection. So we want it to be very rigid and secure. We're just going to eyeball this because the amount we take off is up to us, really.
and that gives us a nice machined flat surface that's going to be in line or parallel with the hole that we already had there and that'll give us a nice alignment with our handle so when we thread this guy in here now we have our working side the ball side and we have the flat side that goes against our movable jaw so now the ball is supported the part is supported your small contact patch is now only on one side between your part and the ball. So as an example here, we're back to this part. This is tapered here. We can pick a side that we want to go against our hard jaw to be our reference. And then we can use the ball tool against the other side, whether it's flat or not, and then clamp on your part. So that's gonna give you a nice secure hold on this part. You're not gonna be able to pull it out or move it, especially if you're doing reasonable machining on that. You can drill holes, tap, mill, whatever you need to do. One thing to note and to be careful of is you have the full force capability of this this vise going down to one little point and realistically that point's going to be about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter so if you really clamp it down you're going to put a dent in your part so one way to get around that is to use some kind of a shim or something if it's important for your part then do it if it's not then don't worry about it but that'll give you a buffer between your part and the ball to absorb that force and of course you'd want to line it up you know put a square in use a parallel whatever other fixtures and parts and pieces you need to line up your part. But this gives you the ability to choose where you want the force to be. Maybe you had a big pocket here that made the part delicate. You could move the ball out here to clamp on the meat of the material. Something like that. You'll have to choose what's going to be appropriate for your part. That's going to give you the results you want. So for example, we have this aluminum shim in here. If I tighten down on this part and we do our machining and then we take it out, if we look at this shim, it's going to have a big dent in it. So that's one thing to be aware of. If you shim it, you're not going to have that mark in your part. And of course, the ball is not going to deform unless you're clamping against something hard. Another thing this is really good for is doing precision squaring. Pick an edge and just face mill it. And then you want to put that edge that you just milled against your hard jaw. That's your reference. If you really want to be very sure that that surface is going to be completely in contact and you're not going to let the front surface affect the clamping of your part based on how the movable jaw is going to put force on it, you can also use this for that. So with the part floating, it's not sitting down in the bottom. Bottom, you may have to line it up this way depending on what you need for your part or what stage you're at. You can clamp the part using the ball also. If you can, you can put some force on the part to hold it against the jaw in what position you need and hopefully not let it slide down like I keep doing. So now you're clamping it with the force only in one part in one tiny little spot, which is going to force your part to align to the back jaw. And you can do that rotating your way around. Just also keep in mind that you may need to shim it between so that you don't dent your part. But that will give you a perfect 90 degree alignment between the back surface you just cut and the top one you're, you're going to cut. And then you can rotate the part. You can have these four sides perfectly perpendicular to the back. And then you'll be able to rotate it one more time, whichever way you choose face the top and you're done on a longer part where you may not have a good surface or it's a little bit flexible or you may have a situation where you need more force clamping on the part you could clamp on a part with a rod also so this piece being a casting let's say we had faced that one we wanted to cut this face and make sure that it was perpendicular to this one. What we can do is we've already cut this one, let's say. We want to clamp it this way. We're putting our first cut side against our hard jaw. You can use a rod, preferably aluminum, and clamp on the rod between your part. That's going to make all the force from the movable jaw go through that rod onto your part. It's going to allow the rod to impact on the part a little bit, and you're kind of creating a custom impression between the rod and the part, and it allows you to get full clamping force along the whole strip of the part and forcing that back edge against the reference jaw. So that would give you a very precise 90 degree cut on the top of your casting relative to the back. You could use it for things that stick up higher and you want to make sure you have as much clamping force and stability on there as possible. You can use this to get a you know, clamping surface along the whole front edge of the part.